so far I don't see any questions um, and I dropped some links in the chat. So I think we're good to go unless anybody wants to unmute themselves. All right, great. Thank you very much, Maggie. So uh, today we're gonna talk about May in the garden and the topics are the weather outlook, what to maintain, what to plant, what to treat, what to fertilize, fruit trees and California natives. So first, let's talk about the weather outlook from the NIFC, which is the Nat National Interagency Fire Center. So the spring has been warm and dry so far. Um, average temperatures in April are a little were a little bit above normal, um, well below normal rainfall in April in Southern California. And the predictions are that the temperatures are likely to be above normal through August. Uh, rainfall is uh, predicted to be below normal through June. And I think we all know we've been going through a drought period. So in San Bernardino and Riverside counties, the drought is um, considered moderate to extreme. And because of this drought, uh, the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California has imposed water restrictions that go into effect on June 1st. So here's some more information on the water restrictions. So it affects 80 cities in Los Angeles, Ventura, and San Bernardino counties. And again, it's um, going to start on June 1st. So um, the water district uh, wants to reduce water usage by 35%. Um, so they've asked local agencies to do what they need to do to achieve that goal. Um, so the local agencies, they have a variety of ways that they can do that. But uh, one of the ways is restricting household lawn watering to once a week. So you really need to check with your, if you're in the affected area, you need to check with your local agency to see um, what they are requesting of you. Um, and I have an, a zoom in on the um, area uh, in the map in the upper right. So it's the, um, and this is the area in San Bernardino County. Uh, it's the um, area in the dark orange. And you can see it affects Fontana, Rancho Cucamonga, Upland, Chino, and also going into LA County, Laverne and Claremont. Um, so some exceptions to the watering uh, restrictions are that hand watering of trees and other perennials will be allowed also drip uh, and high efficiency irrigation systems. So um, if you are interested in more resources in keeping your trees and plants alive during uh, drought and water restrictions, uh, you can go to the homepage of our website on the right-hand side. And the information on the water restrictions came from uh, the New York Times had an article. Uh, they actually have a California newsletter every day. So going from hot to cold, uh, let's talk about chill hours for fruit and nut trees. Uh, let's see how we did this past year uh, with chill hours from beginning of November through February. And here we've got a few locations listed. And the first number is the number of chill hours uh, below 45 degrees. And the second one is below 45 and above 32 degrees, which is actually the more useful number. So uh, looking at Pomona, 463 hours. Uh, UC Riverside, 334 hours, and that's pretty typical for the inland valleys. Um, when you go to the high desert and higher in elevation, uh, it gets higher. So in Lake Arrowhead and Victorville, closer to a thousand. So there are definitely more uh, fruit and nut trees that you can grow there. Um, also, um, there are uh, stations that measure temperature and other data, and these stations are located throughout California. The stations that are, uh, that are currently working in uh, San Bernardino County are shown in, in the lower right. 
And also if you're interested in um, more information about the chilling hours in your area, you can go to uh, chilling calculators on the fruits, uh, UC Davis Fruit and Nut Research and Information Center website. So when you're selecting fruit and nut trees for your garden, it's important to match the chilling hour requirements to the chilling hours in your area. And this chart shows the uh, chilling requirements uh, for different varieties. So there are always new varieties being developed and they may have uh, lower requirements, but uh, you can see here that almond, fig, pecan, persimmon, pomegranate have the lowest chilling requirements and apple, cherry, pear, pistachio and plum have the highest. So before we move on, are there any questions on chill hours or the weather and drought? I don't see anything. I've just been dropping links in the chat, but you guys can type questions in and uh, really great description on the outlook. Not particularly- uh, <laughs> Nothing <sort of>. new. <laughs> no, well, I was gonna say it's not, it's kind of bleak, but it's really, that was a good, um, Outlook uh, description there, but so no, nothing yet, thanks. All right, okay, so let's move on to some of the maintenance tasks in your garden this month. So um, it's warm enough now that you may have noticed some bugs in your garden. Um, for earwigs, slugs, and white flies, you can set out traps, and those are available at hardware stores and garden centers, or you can check the UC IPM website for ideas to make your own. Um, one way to control earwigs is to use a tuna fish or cat food can as a trap, and then you fill it with half an inch of oil, um, especially tuna fish oil, and then you sink it in the ground and you empty it and refill it as needed. And also you wanna to try to eliminate the moist places uh, where, these, where these insects can hide. Um, as the days continue to heat up, uh, you'll want to put mulch around your plants to control weeds and keep the soil moist, uh, especially important in drought conditions. And then don't forget to leave some uh, space around the base of the plant uh, to give air circulation and discourage rot. And that's especially important with trees. Um, also, you want to deep water trees and shrubs to encourage the roots to grow down. So it's better to water less frequently, but longer. So if you can only water, say, once a week, then just want water longer. Uh, you can build a don donut-shaped uh, basin around the trunk and fill it with water and then allow it to sink in. Just don't allow that standing water to um, stand around the trunk. And then uh, for dahlias, they like the soil amended and rich. Uh, they also need plenty of fertilizer and water during the summer. Um, if you have flowering plants, uh, cut, cut off the spent flowers unless you're saving seeds and that encourages uh, more blooms. Um, if you have fruit trees, you can try hanging uh, shiny objects like strips of foil or CDs, if you can find a CD anymore, um, put those in the trees and that will help deter birds. Um, and then as your flowering shrubs finish blooming, then you can start pruning them and removing the old and dead wood. Um, May is also a good time to start trimming hedges and shrubs. And you also want to keep water features like ponds, fountains, and bird baths clean uh, to discourage algae from growing and uh, mosquitoes from making a home there. So because it's been so dry over the past few years, it's gonna be more important than ever to maintain those defensible spaces around your home. Um, so uh, those are usually talked about in terms of zones. So Zone one and two include the 100 feet, 100 feet of defensible space um, that's required by law. So zone one is the lean, clean, and green zone, 30 feet from buildings and structures. And zone two is the reduced fuel zone, 30 to 100 feet um, from structures. 
Uh, the basic idea is to remove dead plants, grasses, weeds, leaves uh, around those areas, uh, prune and remove overhanging tree branches, remove flammable plants and shrubs. And you wanna create horizontal and vertical space uh, between shrubs and trees so that fire doesn't move uh, between the two. And if you want more information, uh, you can go to readyforwildfire.org. So May is also a good time to check your irrigation system and perform uh, maintenance if it's needed. I use drip irrigation uh, in my raised bed. And um, during, you know, at the start of the season, I like to flush my drip lines, I replace the battery in my timer, and I make sure the uh, filters are clean. So water's flowing. You don't want to get into June or July and then figure out that your plants aren't actually being watered. And the UC California Garden Web website has some tips on adjusting uh, irrigation to conserve water. Um, and you know, just just as a note, uh, most most landscapes are over irrigated. Um, if you don't have a smart irrigation controller, that's a controller that adjusts the irrigation based on the weather, uh, then you'll need to change your watering schedule with the seasons. So what works for January is certainly not going to work for July. Um, so the website has some worksheets and instructions on how to set a proper schedule. And before you plant for the season, it's a good idea to um, add compost and soil amendments if you haven't already. Um, the UC a website um, has some tips to improve your home garden soil. Uh, you may wanna start uh, making your own compost this year. There's never a bad time to start composting. Um, there's a publication on the UC a website called Compost in a Hurry. Uh, we also have several videos on composting on the UCCE San Bernardino YouTube channel. And you can check your soil pH uh, by using a kit that you can buy at the hardware or garden store. And we're going to talk more about pH later. And then you can also do a simple jar test where you put some soil in a jar, then fill it up with water, shake it up, allow it to settle. And then you can see what kind of soil you have, how much sand, silt, and clay to know whether you want to uh, adjust it to allow more or less drainage. Um, if you're not going to be planting an area, consider cover cropping, and that'll keep the soil active. It'll also control weeds and reduce erosion on slopes. And if you plant crops like clover and fava beans, that will increase the organic matter and nutrients in your soil, especially nitrogen and improve your soil structure. So to learn more about cover cropping in your area, you can go to the Cal Flora website. Um, it's also called the NRCS California eVeg Guide and NRCS stands for Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, are there any questions about what to maintain uh, before we move on? So you can either put them in the chat or unmute yourself to ask your question. I don't see anything yet in the chat, um, but uh, unmute if you feel, if you have any questions. All right, moving, moving right along. Um, so what to plant? can plant mostly anything this time of year. Uh, one of my favorites is uh, our herbs and they smell good, they're easy to grow and they have so many uses from culinary to medicinal um, and they can be planted year round. Um, spring's the best time to get them established uh, and it's a great time to plant basil in the inland valleys. And now you'll also want to prune your perennial herbs such as rosemary and sage to encourage new growth. And uh, I would say watch out for mint uh, because it's very invasive. I personally plant my mint in pots rather than in my raised beds. I learned my lesson a couple of years ago. Uh, and you may wanna start a three-tiered herb garden uh, for yourself or a friend and you can uh, grow a variety of herbs in three nested containers. And Maggie has a great how-to video on our YouTube channel. 
So here's a little bit more about the three-tiered herb garden with some pictures. Um, the advantages are that um, you can um, move it around in bad weather and you can also uh, keep it uh, near your kitchen door to have uh, fresh herbs for cooking. You can plant many different uh, kinds of herbs um, in a small space. And there are three different microclimates. Um, so you can, you can grow different types of herbs. So the top is dry and warm, uh, might be a good place for something like sage, middle, medium and temperature protected, and then bottom is the wettest and the most insulated. So a nice, easy project. Then May is a good time to plant flowers to give them time to acclimate before summer comes. Uh, and there are plenty of flowers available at garden centers now, marigolds, zinnias, sunflowers, salvia, uh, petunias and patience. Um, there's also flowers that grow from bulbs like uh, lilies and uh, tuberous begonias. Um, in some areas, it is getting a little too late to plant cool season flowers like pansies and impatience um, because they, they may struggle in full sun and heat, but it really depends on the conditions in your particular yard and what elevation you're at. So for vegetables, um, you can consult a planting chart to find out the best time to plant and the dates are gonna vary with your location. Um, you can find several different uh, planting charts for Southern California on the internet. And this is not an endorsement of any of the businesses that offer them or the particular planting charts, but um, Stover Seed in Sun Valley has one that lists different areas of California, including coast, interior valleys, and desert valleys. And then Grand Ghetto Seed and Garden Supply in, San Diego, in the San Diego area has a planting guide. Um, and on this one, it'll show in dark green the optimal time to plant uh, different kinds of vegetables. So for instance, if we look at May here, we can see it's a good time to plant most things like uh, beans, beets, cantaloupe, carrots, corn, cucumbers, eggplant, and jicama. And then moving down here, um, also lima beans, okra, peppers, pumpkin, radish, squash, sunflowers, Swiss chard, uh, tomatoes, turnips, uh, watermelon, and zucchini. So it's not too late to plant vegetables from seed, including um, beans, beets, corn, cucumber, melons, okra, parsley, parsnip, peppers, etc. even tomatoes. Um, I just planted my bush beans and cucumbers uh, from seed. Uh, if you've been starting your plants in a greenhouse or cold frame, it's probably time to do some house cleaning and get those plants into the ground. Um, if the night temperatures are warm enough, you can transplant tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, and herbs. And I have not, I personally have not had an issue with those um, in, in the valley uh, at this time. Uh, at lower elevations, we are transitioning away from the cool season greens like lettuce, cabbage, and kale, but you can still grow them uh, up in the mountains. And I don't know about you, but my cilantro doesn't like the summer heat. In fact, it's already gone. <laughs> my first cilantro is already gone for the season. It actually survived the winter, uh, but it died recently. Uh, my parsley is also, which survived the winter, is also on its way out, but I might plant another one. Um, but you can get cilantro to grow in the summer by planting every two weeks and then harvesting quickly before it bolts because it is, it is gonna bolt quickly. So weeds, let's talk about everybody's favorite topic. Um, best to um, pull weeds early and often. Uh, unfortunately, weeds usually grow faster than the plants that uh, we're trying to grow. Um, if you wanna find out if a plant is a weed, the UCIPM has a handy weed uh, photo gallery. Um, are there any questions about what to plant? I don't see anything in the chat and yeah, I'm just, 
I did start some seeds late and I'm like, I'm just going to go for it. We'll see what kind of it is a little bit late, but I did, I have about four inch tomatoes and I'll get them in the ground. And so we'll see how they go. <laughs> yep. It's all, it's all an experiment. All right. Um, if there are no more questions, let's move on to the next section, uh, what to treat. So the best um, place for evidence-based information is the UCIPM, that's the Integrated Pest Management website. And you can look under Home Garden Turf and Landscape Pests. Uh, there's a page for almost every pest you can think of along with photos, treatment options, um, and also those options uh, minimize the risk to people and the environment. So the next few slides show some examples. So for instance, strawberries, um, at the top, it has some cultural tips like bed preparation, fertilizing, harvesting, planting, and then down below are the pests and the disorders. You can see at the top is the, um, the spotted wing drosophila, the fruit fly, and then you can also see aphids, uh, earwigs, et cetera, underneath, and you can click on each of those to get more information. And then also um, pocket gophers, you can search for the name of the pest. Um, and I'm very familiar with these little guys because they ate my entire winter garden, uh, not this past year, the year before. Uh, and I had to dig out all the soil and line the bed with hardware cloth. Uh, but after I did that, I have not had a problem. Although I can see their holes where they're trying to get in, but they haven't been able to make it. So. And then you can, on the top, there's uh, a little button for quick tips, and you can click that and um, get a summary of information. So here's a list of some other issues, uh, what to watch out for. The first is the coddling moth, uh, which attacks uh, apples, pears, English walnuts. Uh, one way to control it is with trunk banding with cardboard, which is later removed. Uh, also citrus scale uh, can be controlled with horticultural oil, but make sure not to apply it when it's too hot. Um, sulfur can be used to treat powdery mildew on grapes. Um, Tanglefoot is an environment, environmentally friendly option to, present in, to prevent insects from climbing trees. And again, this is not uh, an advertisement for the product. I haven't used it myself, but it's a sticky compound that's applied um, to a wrap around the trunk of the tree. And then um, it's a good time to check roses for black spot mildew and rust and, and aphids and um, spray if needed. You can check the UCIPM for treatments. Um, aphids can usually be controlled by spraying them repeatedly with water or insecticidal soap and also by controlling ants because they're going to farm the aphids. Uh, and aphids, I found aphids to be less of a problem when the temperatures start to increase. And then just a friendly reminder to not spray insecticides when trees are in bloom because they're gonna har harm the beneficial insects and pollinators uh, that you want uh, to, um, for your fruit. So make sure to identify the pest or the disease before treating. And if you need help with identification, you can contact uh, Master Gardener Helpline, and I'll give the email address at the end of the pre presentation, and maybe uh, Maggie can put that uh, in the chat right now again, too. Are there any questions on what to treat before we move on? Okay, so far, just sharing all the great resources you have listed, so I think we're okay, unless anybody wants to add anything. All right. Um, moving on to what to fertilize. Um, feeding your plants is especially important when they're actively growing during the spring and summer. And so fertilizing provides three main plant nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, uh, usually denoted as NPK uh, for the elements in the periodic table. 
And the picture on the right shows what each nutrient does for the plant. So nitrogen promotes the growth of green foliage, potassium overall health, uh, including fruiting and flowering, and phosphorus promotes root growth. So on a bag of fertilizer, you'll see three numbers, um, and those represent the proportion of N, P, and K. So for instance, if you see 32, 10, 10, that means that the fertilizer contains 32% nitrogen, 10% phosphorus, and 10% potassium by weight. And so depending on you know, what your plant is needing, you can decide on what kind of fertilizer. Uh, you would like to put down. So one factor that affects the uptake of plant nutrients is pH. So a pH of seven is neutral, uh, below seven is acidic, above seven is basic or alkaline. Uh, most plants grow best when the pH is slightly acidic to neutral. However, um, our soils tend to have a higher pH, but most plants will still uh, do well. Unless the pH is really far off, it's probably um, not a uh, cause for concern. Uh, there are certain plants like blueberries, rhododendrons, azaleas, and camellias that prefer more acidic soil. Um, so you can amend in that case. Uh, the chart shows the effect of pH on the availabil availability of plant nutrients. Um, and it's shown by the thickness of the bar. So it shows that at very low or very high pH, certain nutrients cannot be absorbed by plants. That's why it's important to keep the pH in the correct range. So here are some links to information about fertilization and acidifying your soil. Um, and again, if your plants are doing well, um, there's no need to get overly concerned about soil pH or try to change it. Um, if you wanna test your soil pH, you can buy inexpensive commercial test kits uh, at hardware and garden stores. So here's some guidance about what to fertilize in May. Um, strawberries at the end of May, uh, and they should still, a lot of them will still be producing. Uh, young, young fruit trees, if not done earlier, cane berries after the harvest, uh, uh, rhododendron when it's done blooming, um, lawns, roses when they start to bloom, citrus, uh, vegetables should be fertilized monthly, indoor plants uh, with slow release fertilizer and also summer blooming plants um, if not uh, done earlier. So let's talk about fruit trees again. Um, you can find more information on caring for fruit trees on uh, homeorchard, ucanr.edu. Um, the best time to plant and prune fruit trees is January and February, except for um, apricots and cherries, which should be pruned in August. And you want to thin um, fruits that have pits um, at or before pit hardening. So while they're still relatively uh, immature, uh, thin apples when they're half an inch in diameter. And then also mow grass and cultivate the soil uh, around the trees um, to discourage uh, insects there. With citrus, um, they really like a lot of water during the summer. So you have to increase watering significantly as the temperature increases. Um, and because we've had such a um, dry year the last few years, um, it would be hard to overwater them at this point. The only issue you may have is with water restrictions. Um, so the citrus may still be flushing right now. So there's a lot of new tender growth and that, that attracts the um, Asian citrus psyllids. So watch for that. Uh, also, you wanna be pruning lightly to remove den dead wood and suckers or water sprouts. I'll show some pictures of those in just a minute. And then um, mature citrus trees do require periodic fertilization. So you can apply three apply fertilizer three times a year, Valentine's Day, so February, Memorial Day, May, and Labor Day, September. 
And here are some photos of flush on citrus trees. Um, and citrus will have several flushes uh, during the year. So uh, check for the ACP on the new growth. You may, if you find um, yellow eggs on the leaves or waxy tubules and, or the aphids. So uh, check for that. And then um, watch out for rootstock suckers and water sprouts. So here's some pictures. Um, on the two photos of the, on the left are uh, the suckers. Uh, they grow below the graft and they should be removed as soon as possible down to the base. Uh, they may produce fruit, uh, but you don't know what you'll get. Um, and some rootstock, uh, the trifoliate rootstock has thorns. So you don't wanna hurt yourself on those. And then uh, the picture on the right shows water sprouts. Um, those grow above the graft and they grow very, very rapidly. They use large amounts of nutrients and water. Um, and you'll see that the stem is flat and has large leaves. And again, they may produce fruit, but it's usually poor quality. So like the rootstock suckers, you wanna remove those uh, at the base. And then check for, uh, also check for citrus leaf miners. Um, the larvae of these, uh, of this moth damages leaves uh, by tunneling or mining and may cause them to curl as shown in the bottom, but that is pretty much um, just affects the appearance. Uh, it's not really going to um, hurt the tree in any substantial way. So as we head into summer, um, You'll want to water your lawn uh, more often if you don't have water restrictions, or if you do, then you're going to water more deeply, less often. Um, if you have an irrigation system, uh, adjust the water schedule, make sure it's operating properly. It's best to water early in the morning uh, when there's less evaporation. And again, deeper, less frequent watering is best. Um, and you also want to control weeds because they're going to compete for um, water with your lawn. Um, so to reduce water usage, uh, you might want to consider replacing your lawn with, with water-wise landscaping. And for more information, Janet Harton has a great blog on uh, conserving water. And also you can check out the uh, UC Guide to Healthy Lawns. Um, and it, it emphasized how to grow a healthy lawn uh, using little or no pesticide. So are there any questions on what to treat? So far. All right, so California, last section of the talk is California natives. So uh, this is the last month to plant California natives. Um, and uh, yeah, the window is closing. Most of the native nur nurseries are closing. So uh, last call to get those in um, because they do need time to acclimate before the heat of summer. So well-established plants that you've planted a while ago, they don't need any fertilizer or very much water. Um, new plants will need some supplemental water um, through the summer and maybe even into early fall. Um, in general, native plants don't need mulch or fertilizer. Um, and you wanna be sure to um, choose varieties that are compatible with your local microclimate, um, especially at higher elevations because some of them are frost sensitive. And a way you can find plants that are good for your location is using uh, the CalScape uh, website. It's an online tool created by the California Native Plant Society. And if you type in your address or your zip code, um, it will give you a list of plants uh, that are native to your area. Um, any questions on California natives? Nothing so far. Okay. Yeah, I have the nursery just closed at the botanical gardens. I and know. I was like, oh, that, that's my signal that that's it. They need to get in the ground and they're going <laughs> to need some extra water this summer. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, yeah, I didn't buy any there this year. I bought a bunch last year and some of them didn't make it because I put them in, I only have one raised bed and uh, I do grow vegetables and some of them just got overwatered. But some oh, of them, yeah. like the monkey flower, have survived very nicely. So, yeah, they'll take a little bit more water. I always underwater those, so I don't do well. But yeah, I bet they like that extra water. And it's kind of interesting. I have two different sages, or had, I should say, I had a purple sage and a black sage in that bed. And the black sage did fine on my doorstep all winter long. And then when I put it in the bed, it died. But the purple sage, which was there, it's been there for at least a year or two is doing great. So I don't Isn't know. That funny. I know. Right. And they're Isn't like literally funny? in the same part of the bed, like right next to each other. So who knows? Right. <laughs> and my rosemary, I had a rosemary that grew for like two years. It was growing great. And then I, uh, yeah, when the, when I was redoing my bed, I took it out, put it in front of my front door and it did great over the winter. And then I put it back in and it died. <laughs> and Weird. then I, wonder I planted what... a new one this spring and it was uh -huh. on the, it was on the way out in my raised bed. It was, it was dying. And so I put it in a pot and stuck it in front of my front door and now it's okay. So Maybe too much water. Huh? Too much water, yeah. Interesting. So you never know. Um, anyway, so back to back to the presentation. Um, so we've got a bunch of different resources um, on growing, on different um, how to take care of different diseases and how to grow vegetables and food safety, uh, orchards, fruit and nuts, all kinds of uh, different topics here for you. And then um, if you want to attend more classes or learn more, you can go to our website, mgsb.ucanr.edu. You can follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our UCCE San Bernardino YouTube channel. We put a lot of our presentations that we give uh, online on that channel, plus more. And uh, you can also sign up for our newsletter on our website. So that is the end of our presentation. Um, if you think of any questions after the presentation, you can always contact our Master Gardener helpline at mgsanburn at ucanr.edu. And um, I can answer some, in, some final questions now. And if you'd like to unmute and ask some questions live, you can do that too. so much Debbie for this great presentation. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and then if anybody has any questions we can stay on um, but thanks for joining us for May in the Garden. Yep thank you.